hello. Hi, hello. Hi, hello. hello. <laughs> So, Dinah, you're just going to say hi and then... Uh, yes, I'm just going to say hello to everyone and I'll be in the chat. So I'll turn my camera off now so Cliff can put his on. Okay. See you later. See you. See you, Dinah. So, hi there. Cliff's coming. Hi. Uh, thank you ever so much for tuning in. We're having so much fun uh, putting these five webinars together. And, um, yeah, so we're back for week three. We've got um, some really interesting stuff. I'm particularly excited about it because it's work that I'm not that familiar with and I'm really looking forward to, um, to learning a lot myself. Um, so just say hi in the chat. And what we're going to do first of all is we're just going to give you a little bit of a review of the last two weeks um, before we go ahead and go straight into this uh, week's webinar. Um, so I'm just going to flip backwards through the slides and then we're going to go forwards and you'll see just how much we've done in the last two weeks. So this is a review of week one and two. Um, we've, this is the themes. This week we're going to be looking at the um, energetic bodies. Really excited about that. Um, so leading up to that, we did some introduction to Pauline, the mass Naga system, functions of the meridians, we did some work on the Hara palpation, and then we did some contraction expansion work, alignment, peripheral vision, modeling and mindset, two-handed technique, and going beyond Kion Jitsu. So let's just have a quick look through the slides while everyone joined us. <clears throat> so here's a picture of Pauline. She was graduated by Masnaga, and she worked um, with him on the 1970s workshops in New York, which were really very well massive. There are 150 people there. Um, actually, that's the same number we've got on this webinar, as it happens, but they were all in a room at Ahashi School. <laughs> um, she also helped translate the book uh, Zen Shiatsu, and she developed the curriculum at the Ahashi Institute. So she was really influential in Europe, um, right from the early 80s, um, in the development of post masnaga Shiatsu. And the theme of these webinars is bringing together the body and the spirit in the touch. So we did a little bit of background on the Masnaga system. Most of you are familiar with the Masnaga system, um, but important uh, components of the Masnaga system include Kyon Jitsu, the Hara diagnosis, and the famous extended meridians. Um, here's a picture of them. But more, I think more importantly than just the fact that there are extensions, is the fact that Masnaga emphasized a kinesthetic experience of the meridians. In other words, the meridian expressions had a kinesthetic or an experiential part of them. It wasn't all just theory in the head. And we had a little play. Um, we, we had a go at feeling the liver and the kidney energy in the whole energetic field. What that does is it extends the function into the physical body and the emotional and mental and spiritual bodies. And it also, another big thing for me anyway, is the fact that those expressions are felt within the whole body, not just down the channel. So again, we're moving to like a holographic system and we're going to build on that as we go. Here's the four components. We've got the philosophy, diagnosis, treatment and theory. And Pauline often referred to this model. And as the philosophy changes, as the theory changes, the treatment and the diagnostic methods kind of need to adapt so that they all fit together into one integrated whole. So here we are, here's the liver and, gall, liver and gallbladder expression, which way to turn, we experienced that. Kidney and bladder getting ready to run, we did an exercise on that. And then we talked about how Kishi and Masanaga both influenced Pauline, and that kind of led us on beyond Masanaga into the post-Masanaga work that Pauline uh, developed. So she apprenticed with Kishi. Masnaga um, thought that Kishi would take his work forwards in the Shiatsu um, world, but he actually kind of parted from Masnaga and developed it more on an energetic level. And so um, he developed a wide range of touch, which included working etherically off the body. Um, and Pauline kind of integrated that into her Shiatsu work. And one of the things that we focused in on was the Hara palpation. We did some practical on ourselves, um, if you were there on the webinar. <clears throat> and we kind of explored what the difference was between deep and slow palpation, which is how Masnaga worked, and a lighter, faster technique 
that Pauline used when she palpated the Hara. Okay, so she used a light touch, a fast, steady rhythm, and the emphasis was looking back, reflecting back, assessing the whole energetic pattern of the Hara as a whole, rather than examining and focusing in in a more contracted way into each of the individual areas. Okay, then we, uh, after week one, we left you with a question. Why did you think Pauline developed the faster and lighter Harapa patient, if you remember? Um, and then we kind of developed that the next week, in week two, we looked at the Tao Te Ching, chapter 42, which is all about how the Tao creates the one, the one creates the two, the two creates the three, and the three creates the 10,000 things. And that chapter in the Tao Te Ching is a kind of, uh, gives you an image of how we move from unity to differentiation. And the reason we flagged that particular chapter up is because Pauline referred to that and she used it as a way of explaining why she tended towards more towards unity, more towards the oneness in the techniques. And that lays the foundations for the going beyond Kionjitsu. Okay, so here's a little table um, with all of the uh, correspondences of the Tao one, two, three, and the 10,000 things. Okay, so, um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. For the, for the three, I quite often use the word life to sense that sense of where the yin and the yang meet, yeah. the chong chi in the image gives us that vibration between the two, the spark. Yes, yes. Yeah. Same sort of thing, chi, your own spirit, life. life. Yeah, okay, so there we are, life. Nice. <laughs> um, and so then we talk about going beyond kyonjitsu towards unification and more into a more expansive experience of the energetic field. We talked about Pauline's influences. She had a lot of influence from the uh, Alexander technique. Um, and she used that to work on kind of using a contractive and expansive aspects of the technique in order to tune her touch into a more contracted touch or into a more expanded touch a more expanded experience of the whole energetic field and in this picture I chose this picture because you can see how she's using different aspects of contraction and expansion she emphasized using the sacrum in order to get a contracted feeling in the touch and the head top uh, to increase the expansion kind of like a yin and yang thing she also used the vision a lot and releasing alignment they were kind of like the foundations of the technique so then we went on to talk about contraction and expansion and about how energy comes into being through this yin and yang process of contraction and expansion. We also talked a little bit about and explored the contractive phase, the fact that there's nothing wrong with contraction, that actually it's very important because we need structure. We need to have some kind of aspect to ourselves that's, that is structured. That's what forms the individuality of our body and our energy field. And when we go into the contractive phase, we tend to go down towards differentiation. The expansive phase, when we move into the expansive phase, that tends to move the parts and they tend to merge together more. Energy frees itself and we move towards unity. And again, Pauline is always um, very clear about one not being better than the other, but actually they both, they're both needed. Okay, and then we had a whole session on the alternating hands technique. And Gabriella did a demo where she showed how she works using the peripheral vision instead of the mother hand to monitor changes in the energetic field. Um, and we also start introduced the idea of experiencing the meridian as light. So working with the vibration of the meridian primarily rather than the Kyojitsu interaction. Um, nearly there. <laughs> and then at the end of last week, uh, Gabriella demonstrated mindset which is basically having an intention or a thought command that you can put into the touch in order to achieve some kind of movement of key. That's one thing that Pauline used a lot, mindset, and you can see her using it there in that picture, going with her laser beam eyes. <laughs> um, and then modeling is a similar technique, but you actually model the experience that you'd like to share or you'd like to give access to to the receiver with um, by creating that modeled sensation in your own energetic field 
and then you kind of resonate that with um, your client. And that's a very flexible technique because you can do it on the physical level, literally just relaxing your shoulders, maybe aligning, maybe releasing a part of your body. But you can also do it on an emotional level, um, calming your emotions or calming your mind or accessing spiritual aspects of your being, which you can resonate. So modeling is a really good multi vibrational level technique. Whew. Right, and then we left you with this question last week. What's the advantage of working in the expansive phase? Yeah, so that's the review um, which I put together from the last two weeks. And then we come back here to this these slides, which is week three. So how did I do, um, Nicola and Gabriella? Is that, if you've got any comments you want to add to that? Yeah. It was great. Okay, good. <laughs> Right, okay, so now we can um, move on to week three and we've got lots of exciting stuff in the next 50 minutes for you. Okay, first thing is you don't need a receiver this week, so don't worry if you haven't got a receiver. Um, we're going to be working with our own energy field and Nicola's going to do a kind of cool group thing uh, later on. Um, and this is what we've got in store. We've just done the review of weeks one and two. We're going to be focusing on the bodies. And this was Pauline's way of structuring the non-material aspects of the energetic field uh, and how they connect to the physical body. OK, so we'll look, look at that question from last week. Um, we'll uh, then Nick is going to take us into a personal experience. We're all going to be working personally. Then Gabrielle is going to do the theory. And then Nicola's going to do some practical work with the whole group at Experiencing the Bodies. So, and then we do a review. So that's what we've got in store. Um, so the question last week, what we left them with, can you remember what it was? Anyone? Expansion. What's, why expand? Yeah, what is the advantage? Of, the advantage. What is the advantage of working with the expansive phase? So if anyone's got an answer they want to put in the chat, we'll just take the first few that come in. If you've been thinking about that all week. Anyone got any thoughts about that? Why work mm. with the expansive phase? Okay, Molly says supports the evolutionary process. That's a very good, that's a very good uh, high, level, yeah. high level answer. Connection, Jose, connection to the whole. Yeah, that's you hit it right on there, Jose. Jose. More holistic, yeah. yeah, wider view, yeah. I think that's the, the main theme is that working with the expansive phase tends to create the space for the energetic field to readjust itself and experience itself as a whole. And I think that's quite a common experience, certainly as a receiver. Um, I can remember that when you gave me a treatment, Gabriella, in Rome a little while ago. That was one of the things I really um, experienced, this feeling of oneness, which was yes. completely not related to where you were actually working. You know, that's the interesting thing. What, no matter where you're working, yeah. I just got this sense of the whole space in the energetic field. Yeah. Um, yep. We've got lots of suggestions here. Gets help from the environment. Okay. Accesses different levels Access of the person. The person. Yeah. How okay, so very so good. Like Excellent. So, okay. Nicola, would you like to uh, do yes. the first practical Thank session? You. Um, what I'll do is I'll turn off the slides, and if Gabriella and I turn off our um, the, the video, our videos, yeah, and maybe our audio as well, so we don't get feedback. Oh, it's well. And yes. then we'll give the center stage to Nicola, and she can, um, uh, yeah, she can take over. I'm just going to turn my webcam off. So um, I'm going to invite you all to stand up. This is going to be sort of qigong exercisey sort of thing. Uh, there you go. So, standing up, we're going to go through starting with what Dinah did, the alignment. So we're going to think about our material body, the actual body. So whatever you normally do before you do Qigong or yoga or get in touch with your being, your matter, the, the meat of yourself, the feet, the body, I usually do this sort of brushing and rubbing, sort of qigong in style. Dinah did some very interesting leg shakes. Do whatever it is that feels good for you. Maybe brushing, connecting. I'm going to do a few more minutes. Put your hands together, 
See if you can find a place to stand, wriggle, jump, rub your fingers. So we're going to come into doing some meridian work in just a moment. So feel the bones in your fingers and start to have a sense that that connects to an energetic flow. You could drop on the heels. That's quite a good way of feeling your physicality, your body, your being. And let's just go through the organs. Maybe a little bit of Tarzan. Take a deep breath. Maybe connect to your heart. Love yourself. That's not very physical. Sorry. Backspace delete. Connect to your heart. Feel your blood flow. Rub your kidneys. Rub your liver and spleen. We're going to do my favorite Dr. Lamb, Master Lamb exercise. Brush down the legs. Brush down the legs. Brush down the arms. Take a little bit of saliva in your mouth. Swallow. <clears throat> really <clears throat> swallow. And imagine with that you're swallowing sunshine, the most healthy smoothie you've ever had, some delicious fruit and vegetables, whatever it is that really rocks your boat. I made elderflower cordial this year. That might be the one. Imagine it going into your stomach, all through your intestines. So the whole physicality is getting nourished. Mm. And then some of that comes maybe out where the sun doesn't shine. Let's not, well, you're in your own room, so that doesn't matter. You can make whatever sounds you like. Have another jiggle and a shake. Just feel your body drop on your heels. And so that's your sort of material body. We're gonna just add in the meridians. We're gonna do just breathing. Breathe in, in your own speed, your own breath, and breathe out. Let's do a few of those. Breathe in and breathe out. Have a sense of that um, breath in the meridians. You might want to rub down to the thumbs or tap if you do a lot of dough in. Activating the meridians. I can hear a funny clitter clatter. Someone's got there doing something. Are you typing, Cliff? <laughs> uh, anyway, activate your meridians in your arms. Breathe, and you're starting to maybe get a sense of your breath. Maybe your ribs are moving. And with that, you get a sense of this beautiful breathing energy, the chi. So the personal body and the material body all become this sort of physical life force. So we're not a piece of meat. We are a living being. And the meridians start to give us that. Let's do three more big deep breaths. Breathing. Feel the chi down. You know where the meridians are. Two. And one more. Big deep breath. Really feel the hands moving in the air. The chi of those meridians. Maybe just connect your forefinger and thumbs. Feel the chi there. So Cliff did gallbladder and liver and kidney and bladder. We're going to do the front as well. So from we're going to brush down from your forehead, stomach and spleen, all the way down the front of the body. Nice big broad hands. Don't worry about the actual tiny locations. Really have a sense of activating the thighs, the knees, the shins, off the big toes. Do that a few times. So brush down. Doing what feels good, doing what feels right for you. You're at home. You can do whatever you like <laughs> and look after yourselves. <laughs> Activate that. I'm going to do a couple more. Really having a sense of uh, waking up the stomach and spleen meridians, the earth meridians. Maybe golden light shining. I'm going to do one more. Beautiful energy coming on the front of my body, golden light, maybe sunshine. Sometimes I think about a big jar of Manuka honey, the most expensive honey in the world. It is only imaginary. <sighs> or golden light or dandelion flowers or 
any beautifulness that makes you feel that energies are light. So, personal body, material body, start to vibrate. We'll feel that energy at the top, the energy of the breath, maybe silver light, like moonlight. Take another couple of breaths, start to expand that. Feel the energy a little bit lower down, your earth energy. Feel your feet really connecting to the earth. Here we're going to connect to the earth together. So we're all on the planet earth, in the center of the earth, we'll meet. But for now we're just connecting to our ether body, so earth energy, golden energy, beautiful light, metal energy, air energy, breath energy. And you might start, especially if you're doing this classic Qigong exercise of holding a ball, imagining your light around you. Don't forget the back, keep the back alight as well. You might start to feel the whole of your aura, your chi field, somewhere below the feet, deep below the feet. In Qigong, there's an expression that says we need to go down to go up. So there's a sense of being grounded to open to this expansion. So if, if, if you can go back at any time. So I'm just going to activate the meridians in the arms a little bit more. Get that sense of breath. Meridian light shining out. Energies in the legs shining out. Whole body shining. Easy way to do it is smile. Another way to do it is imagine you can connect to us. You know, Cliff and Dinah in Norwich, Gabriella in Rome will be there. So using amplification, we'll do it together. Beautiful. And imagining our feet on the earth, we're connecting in. So we've got a sense of these ether bodies holding. If, 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 if holding the ball is something you're not used to doing, just hold your hands really low. And so your, the ball is in your hands. Don't, do not make this a meditation on pain. Far too contracting. Feel the energy. Let's do another couple of breaths together. Brush down to the forefinger and thumb. Lift up the arms as you breathe in and lift, let them drop as you breathe out. Just starting to make the energy flow. That works really well. Okay, so if you can do the same with the feet, imagine breathing out through your feet, through your foot gates, through the whole of the soles of your feet, through the bubbling spring, but a big broad bubbling spring. Breathe out down the legs, connecting to the earth. Breathe in, up through the legs. And a few more times. Breathe out, down. Breathe in, up. Your own rhythm. Some of you will, I go quite fast. I'm a bit excited. I'm on a webinar. Breathe out, connect to the earth. We're all connecting to the earth. We're all connecting to the same earth. Beautiful. Let your ether body shine. This whole chi field that you're standing in. Let your feet be really connected. Hips, knees, ankles all soft, spine long. Remember our alignment that Dinah gave us? And then that sense of the expansion of the meridians, we can expand out. Beautiful. I can really get a sense of some of you joining in. I, as I was watching the chat as you were coming in, people all over Europe, Netherlands, Spain, Somerset, Surrey, Scotland, Wales, and America. We had Chicago and New York all over the place. So this is the next step. We're going to connect to each other. Have a sense of our lights, our beautiful lights. We're going to tune into our astral body. So hold your hands in uh, holding the ball if that's easy for you. Like I said, don't do it if it's uncomfortable. Just stand easy. But imagine your hands maybe connecting to the whole of your chi field. Just being a bright, smiling shiatsu light in the world. And we're starting to connect to each other. From my home here in Bristol, 
to Norwich, to Rome, all of us connecting out, our lights shining around the world. Beautiful. See if you can just tune into that with your soft mind. Don't think too hard. It's extraordinary. I've been looking forward to this all day, wondering how it would work. Okay, we're going to do a little experiment. So all of you in America, in the Americas, tune in and connect to us across the Atlantic, the easy way, connect straight to Europe. Beautiful. Okay, pay attention. And we're going to ask the people in America to go the long way around, to connect to us over the Pacific and come into Europe the other way. See if you can feel the difference. Oh my God. I felt that. And now just doing whatever feels good. Just connecting to each other. People's names you recognize on the chat. As I said, Cliff and Diana in Norwich, Gabriella in Rome. Just a network of qigong and shiatsu and chi feels and healing and love and smiles. And wouldn't it be nice if we could all meet in a room and do this one day soon? And all the rest of it. Just saying hi to each other through our astral bodies. Ooh. I'm going to hold it for another couple of breaths. I'm just going to be quiet for a couple of breaths, tuning into this beautiful network we've created. Oh. And it, oh, I said I'd shut up. That's amazing. I can't shut up. It's so amazing. And one of the ways to tune into it is as though we're watching a film, so you can maybe expand and just check in with one of us or someone you know and tune into that light and then wriggle and stop obviously feel your feet on the earth and we're just going to have another couple of breaths holding these astral bodies it's amazing and gently releasing Bring yourself back into your own space. Maybe brush down the arms again, because that's where we started. Opening the unenlarged intestine. Starting to bring yourself back into a little bit more contractive phase. Maybe tap the chest. One of the best ways to come out. So we can get a bit spaced out. Going out into the expansion is to just touch. Touch is such a lovely contracting thing. And what Pauline's aim with this work was to let the, oh, we're part of the oneness, go into every cell. So really good idea to just brush some of the meridians before you finish. And brush down my stomach and spleen a few times. Bring them, bring, I've got to touch my heart as well. Bring the energy into the body. Beautiful. So oh, thank you for taking part. That was quite exciting. <sighs> Take another deep breath. Wriggle your toes. Maybe sit down. I'm going to switch off my camera and microphones. Set up for the next thing. Thank you so much for joining me with that. It really worked. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you very much, Nicola. You're welcome. Now we've got some polls for you. Um, Oh, I'm just to see, see how how you uh, how you experience that. Um, so here we go. This is a practical with Nicola, which we, we've just done, and we just want to find out whether you felt a difference between the bodies. Okay, so I'm just going to share it with you now. So, did you feel any difference between the bodies? Yes, no, or not sure. And if you're not sure, and if you didn't feel a difference, then don't worry because we've got another exercise coming up after the theory. <laughs> okay, great. So most of you did feel a difference. And we've got another poll coming up straight after this one, if you just like to finish voting. Um, and that is, which one did you feel the most strongly? So 
I know the, what the answer is for me, but let's just see. If you did feel a difference, um, which one did you feel the most strongly, the most clearly? And you've got basically just to review, you've got the material body, which is the actual physical body, um, the personal body, which is kind of the activation of the material body, so it's more energetic, the ether body, which is your own contained um, energetic body, and then you've got the astral body, which is the one that connects you to other people, if they were the four different stages. So I'm going to share this poll. Okay, which one did you feel the most strongly? The material body, personal body, the ether body, or the astral body? <laughs> which I isn't that interesting. I thought that that is very very interesting because it was for me it definitely was the astral body which was the clearest one. But that might be something to do with the fact that we've got 180 people all around the world zapping us, <laughs> modelling that level. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, after we've done the theory with Gabriella, and then we're going to go back and Nicola's going to do a group exercise, which I'm excited about, which is we're going to, she's going to actually work with us as a group, like a kind of treatment to do a treatment with us um, as receivers. So um, over to you, Gabriella. Okay. Um, this is theory with Gabriella and us, and it, I'll let you control the slides if you like. Okay. Oh, but if I can make it. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 So. Can you hear me okay? Because I can hear I you. hear you perfectly, yeah. Okay. So we start from the meridians. And uh, last week we said that Pauline went beyond the Kyoin Jitsu towards unification, towards the one. And so she would work only with one meridian, the dominant meridian, which was the meridian that had the strongest expression in the energetic system of the receiver and therefore the meridian that could create the most change in the energy of the receiver. And uh, one thing that Cliff already emphasized is that the meridians vibrate at all levels. So they vibrate at the physical, at the emotional, at the mental and at the spiritual level. And um, what was very interesting that Pauline was working, of course, we also do the meridian as light, which means as a vibration that resonates in the body and in the field. And if you have this mindset, this intention of working the meridian as light, it makes a complete difference in what you feel and what you perceive in the body and in the feet, and also what the receiver feels about himself. He really has this feeling, as you were saying, Cliff, of being one, of unity and unification. Yeah. And we can also say, as Nicola just made us experience, that meridians can be a bridge between the various bodies, and we can always go back and to the meridians like an anchoring for our work. And this is a very nice picture from Nicola that shows how working the meridian as light not only resonates in the body but starts expanding its resonance also in the field. It's a very nice picture. She's she a is an artist. She's, she's, an, an artist. she's an artist. I'm a little bit envious because I cannot draw anything. I'm really <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Okay, so let's go into the bodies, the famous bodies that make the energetic body. So Pauline used to uh, see the, um, the energetic body as uh, a series of levels vibrating at different speeds. So we always say it's not an onion, it's not, they are not separated, but they are an expansion going further and further. So the slowest and denser level is what she called the material body. The material body includes the physical body, so our anatomy and physiology, so bones, muscles, organs, and what Pauline called the light body, the chakras and the meridians. The material body, uh, oh, it's really <laughs> fixed in the three space, so it really operates in linear time and space, and it is the core 
the energetic core because it really anchors and grounds the energy in the physical form. So it's very important. Then we have the personal body. So the personal body is an extension of the light body, so of the meridians and of the chakras. And it extends in the space around our body, but it's not confined, restricted by the borders of the physical body. It's still very much connected with the physical body. And if you see, this is a picture that I took from Pauline's DVD. It still has the shape, it, it follows the shape of the physical body, of the material body, but it's you know, the border of the material body just vanishes. So it, it's like, a, again, going into the one. And of course, it's very much connected to the three dimensions. Then when, oops, two first. When the material body and the personal body vibrate at the same speed of expansion, we go into a further expansion, which is the ether body. The ether body is also called the emotional body and it's a reflection of our thoughts, of our belief systems and of course of all our emotions. And um, when we get to this stage, we get a lot of information of non-3D. So because in the ether body we find the signs or scars of traumas and stresses, but we also may find the memories of marvelous events. So really the ether body gives us access to the database of our receiver. So we really can get a lot of information. And uh, um, the ether body is kind of buffer zone, so it's, it's a gate to the astral body. It really opens the access to the astral body. And this is another picture from Nicola that uh, pictures the ether body opening up to the astral body and so the, this connection with the, the energy of heaven and earth, so the yin and yang getting together. It's very nice. So the astral body is uh, an organized energy field and it extends into the universe. It's really a very, very expansive energy. It's a very fast vibration energy. And uh, it uh, gives us access to the divine source. So it really connects us to our source, to our divine source. And because it's such an expansive, such a high vibration, uh, energy in order to work with it we have to kind of define it so we anchor the energy of the astral body to two chakras to two star chakras which are outside of the body of, that we will see next week one is the earth star chakra and the other one is the soul star chakra so that pauline was saying this way we can work with that portion of the astral energy that is our receiver otherwise you know being such an expansive energy going out into the universe it would be not so easy to really connect work and interact with it and in um, this organized field of energy kind of um, organizes itself in a grid-like framework or connects to the universal grid. So again, it's, it's a kind of structure with which we can work. However, however, very often, and talking to Nicola, we had the same experience. Uh, very often this greed um, transforms itself or gives space to the flower of life. The flower, so this uh, field of energy organizes itself in connecting with the flower of life. The flower of life, as you see in this picture, is a symbol of sacred geometry. 
It is said that a life is not enough to understand sacred geometry. So we don't even attempt to do it here. We can only say that sacred geometry is really the um, blueprint of creation and it, it's the origin of all forms. So it's really a, a huge, huge, huge science. And in this picture, you see this representation of the flower of life and that connects us to the multidimensionality of the astral realm. And to end, these are Pauline's hands. Playing with energy, holding energy, interacting with energy, and we love the, her hands. We love to see her working and how her hands would really connect with the with the receivers in a global way and we love to feel her hands on our bodies when we were receiving from her so we miss them we miss her and that's it but it's happy i'm happy that we are kind of celebrating her in these five weeks thanks to cliff i think i finished my slide yes Gabriella, that's great. So hopefully that will clear up, you know, the definitions of each of the bodies. Um, and uh, Nicola's been, look at that. She's changed the state. <laughs> <laughs> she's now uh, gonna... <laughs> got a, a table ready to work yeah. and she's going to do a group work with us. So you'd like us to tune in, right, Nicola? Absolutely. I want everyone to tune in. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to see the screen, then just sit comfortably. There's nothing to do but receive. Hopefully, we're going to do something very similar to the exercise I just did, but I'm going to do it as a treatment for the group. So not only the 177 attendees, but also the people who are watching on the recording. So this answers right. your it's question. Beyond space and time, right? Okay. Yeah, we're going beyond space and time. <laughs> I've asked Pauline's help. <laughs> so I'm going to work. Okay, so what do we have to do? We have to just receive. We're going to just receive, right? Okay, so we we turn off uh, the microphone and the and the camera. You now you turn your microphones off because there is this echo problem. Okay. Cool. Mm. So. This is my frog. This is my hot water bottle that I've had for at least 30 years. And I'm going to use the frog to represent you all. So, like I said, everyone who's watching right now, so in this time frame, but also if you're watching in a recording. And as I said to Alma on the question on the chat, you know, you can still watch an old movie and it will still affect you. So the recording is going to be just as healing as in real time. What we do get in real time is the sense that we're all doing this right now. So I'm going to also make an attempt to get the bodies a bit clearer. You've got the astral. I don't need to worry about that so much. But I am going to put in the two stars. So I'm going to light a candle. This is very much how I do my etheric treatments, not always on frog. I'm going to light a candle for the earth star. In a stone, in a pebble, the earth star. Why oh, didn't need to let it match out? And a candle for the heaven star. Just to keep it in my space, because there is a danger of me getting too spaced out. So, feet on the ground, my own alignment, coming in to treat everyone who's watching a sense of your beautiful physical bodies. So I've got hot water in the hot water bottle, so it feels quite human. Well, not very, but I'm sending love, and I'm gonna work on the heart meridian, so I'm sending love particularly into your body, your blood. Let your bodies be very relaxed. However you're sitting, or if you've chosen to lie down, really just enjoy. 
a little bit of Nicola Hart energy. Sending out love to you all. And just as we did in the exercise just now, there's a sense that Shiatsu folk are connected. The energy of us is going around the world and we can be a force for positivity. So hands, touch is what we're missing. Hopefully you can have a sense, maybe even put your own hand on your heart. Have a sense of that physicality. Take a breath, breathe into your body. And maybe it's a bit easier to feel your physical body now. I'm gonna activate the heart meridian. So hand on the heart. Froggy's heart meridian. I've never done this before. Even in my practice, I just went, oh, let's do that. It's a bit strange under his armpits. So frog, sending heart chi. And starting to build up that beautiful pink energy of the heart, the heart of the group, the feeling of us. And of course the heart is the very center of our energy body, the middle tantien, center of our ether body. So as I build that energy up, I'm gonna open up the central channels. So this is something that Pauline taught us, to open the central channels, fingers going right through the body, right through the frog, right through the energy of the group, to the stars, earth star and the heaven star, and beyond. But we're not going to do much beyond right now. We're just going to build that up in the middle, have a sense of this energy. And one time I was, so one hand on the body, keeping you grounded in your physical body. One time I was working with Gabriella in, when we started doing this work with Pauline, and she did this with us, we were doing this. And she took hold, uh, hold of my hand and said, okay, reach out reach out, what can you feel beyond the edge of the ether body? And I can still feel her doing that for me now. And there's a sense of this moving into the astral. So here we are. Hopefully, hopefully you've got some sense of me touching your heart. I'm really, it's sort of, some of you put um, emotion on the chat. And there is a real emotion here because I would so love to do a swap with every one of you, any one of you. <laughs> Connecting to our ether body, the light of the Shatsu people, and then beyond. Connecting out. Pauline's hand saying, what do you feel beyond the ether body, the astral body, going into the grid? And Gabriella just explained really well about the flower of life. So Pauline used to teach us to grid like this, a cross, a tartan grid, but it has this weird thing of bringing the energy towards the parts that we don't want to mention. And one time, one of Brigitte's students was doing it like this, which worked for me and I suddenly saw the room full of the flower of life. And that's what I've done ever since. So Mm, certainly 10 years, across the body this way, across the body this way. And in the chat, Dina already mentioned that she felt like the astral body we were connecting was like the flower of life. So just lying there, heaven star above your head, earth star below your feet, or if you're sitting, earth star below your bum, <laughs> connecting you into the earth grounded, heaven star connecting you to a power greater than yourself, God, the source, the oneness, whatever word is a good word for you. I quite like oneness or Tao, but I did a lot of work with the recovery movement for a couple of years. A power greater than me is fine. So connecting to your stars, and your stars are two of those circles bringing in the flower of life, taking out the flower of life, connecting to everything. In every direction, we're still gonna keep this 2D for sake of the demo, so you can have a feeling, bringing the energy in. I've got, I'm sort of imagining I've got my hands in the earth star, which for all of you is connected deep into the earth, just as when we were standing. 
the heaven star, which is connected to something we can't describe. We play with. And it takes us to the oneness where everything is. And we are part of the oneness. We are not exceptional. We're not too special to be part of the oneness and we're not too unworthy. And all the other reasons you might think, oh, not me. <sighs> okay, I'm just gonna do that once more. Open up the central channels, plug in the stars, go beyond the ether body, treating the whole group via the astral grid, sending love. One of the other words I use for the, the power of, um, power that's greater than us is the unconditional love of the universe. So tuning into the unconditional love of the universe, allowing it there for everyone. Beautiful. And th this is the gestures that Pauline taught, so I still do them. She also does this sort of winding into the body. I'm going to start bringing it in. We're going to go backwards. I've got hands firmly on my warm frog, allowing you to drop into your physical being, bringing every bit of that amazing, unconditional love of the universe into every cell of your being. Maybe smile, maybe feel that. Maybe put a hand on your heart going to bring it in back into the heart meridian, maybe feel a pulse, maybe do any wriggling or moving if you need to, of course, it's your treatment, take a deep breath, bring the energy into the frog, into the body, into the body of the group, gently withdrawing, I'm going to blow the candles out, may up heart be strong like a mountain. May your mind be wide like an ocean of stars. Thank you. I hope that the unconditional love of you will stay with you all. Hey, thank you so much. How <laughs> was it? <laughs> that was very interesting. It was so yeah. interesting. I mean, I can see why the astral plane is, is from the group work is such a strong experience because obviously that's the moment when you get to the astral that you can really connect with the group. And and when you when I, when I had you pressing on my <laughs> heart meridian, <laughs> obviously it sort of brings you back into the body, but it really does differentiate your own individuality with the sort of, you know, the more expanded realm yeah yeah Good. it was very dramatic i felt the the earth and the soul star chakras stronger than i think i've felt in a um one-to-one -one session really because i think again it was amplified up you yeah. know the whole thing was amplified because this is this sort of zoom world or online world is the astral plane in one way it is it is especially when you start doing distant work and stuff like that and you start tuning in you know you, when, when you can actually see that you can f experience the energy energy of a point being pressed that information can't just be visual it must be because you're tuning in you know multi-dimensionally to what's going on so yeah it's really really good fun um okay great we've got actually got five questions so let me just have a quick look oh we've got some polls as well haven't we yeah. Let me just have a quick look at the, um, so we've done the practical. Um, oh yeah, we've got uh, the same question. I've got the same question again. So when in the actual practical exercise that we did, um, did you feel any difference um, in the group exercise between the different bodies? For example, when Nicola tuned into the astral plane, when she tuned into the physical body, let's just see whether there was, whether that was actually a stronger experience. Yes. yes. Yeah, it was. There we are. So there we are. That's an improvement there. <laughs> um, well done. That's great. And uh, the other thing, just generally, did you feel a connection to the group during the exercises? I'll just give you a bit more of a chance to vote on that one. Yeah. Did you feel a connection to the group um, yes. when uh, Nicola went onto the astral plane? You may have done, or you may have not, you may have been more dominant in your material, your own material, personal body. There's nothing wrong with that, but just out of interest, let's just see. Again, the great, um, yeah. 
majority did um and yeah so the other question i actually added another question um which is i just wanted wondered whether the second exercise made the bodies clearer to you they definitely did to me because um it was more of a you know an amplified experience so did the second exercise make it clear you might just say no because they were perfectly <laughs> clear the first time <laughs> But yeah, see, a lot of people found that the second one sort of yeah. reinforced it. So that's really, really good. Okay, so question yes. and answer. So let's have a look at the questions. I'll just bring them up and we can answer them live. Diana's been working away in the background. Um, can you just say one thing before we do the questions? Of course you um, can, yeah. So think about the people who are not sure, haven't felt anything yet. Mm -hmm. The energy is still there. If you want to do it in a more relaxed way to do it on your own another time it's still yes. there for you. and my qigong teacher used to say there's no point just watching it like tv in the background you do have to do your part and tune in otherwise you won't feel it that's for <laughs> sure <laughs> so if you've got five minutes and you want to try again do it another time that's just for people who, who are not sure Thank okay you. questions yes. I think I answered mm. Almut's question. I, don't, I hope I'm saying that right. I'm not sure, Almut. Uh, we can do them live. Let's have a look. Um, all right. Okay. So here we go. Almut, have you? Should we just answer this one? Um, how do I know that if a sensation or information is actually information? I'm quite afraid of making things up. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. a good question. Um, the first answer is you can't completely do that. You can't tell because some of it you do make up. But mm -hmm. if you do your guess or you make something up very quickly, it's almost certainly been informed by the energy. So the more you get used to knowing what your own story is, the less you're likely to make it up if you listen carefully. And one of the ways you really know if information is coming to you is if it makes you laugh, if it's something that you, wasn't, you weren't expecting. Yeah. So I had an experience with a, a, a spirit, whatever we want to call it, and it said something like, I've just got to go to the toilet. I went, what? <laughs> Don't say that. And then I realized that something was happening, that it, whatever the experience was, it made me laugh so much that it was a, not me making it and up. Also, if you don't have any prejudice about your receiver, and if you are not judgmental, then it, it just comes yes. to you. And you are, you are interested and surprised. That's what you were saying too. I mean, it's not something you expect. Another thing, I, I think that's absolutely right. Yeah, and the other thing I've, I, I think as well is, you know, what I've found anyway, is it's always good to get confirmation. You know, so you can yeah. ask the receiver, ask them, you know, I felt such and such, you know, does that make any sense to you? And then you might be surprised. They might say yes, you know, and you can uh, get that feedback. And the more feedback you have of that, then the more you can, you confident can. you get, you know, yeah. that you're not just making it up. Um, <laughs> Um, okay, so where are we? Let's see. Yes. How about um, Pascal says, how about accessing a third dimension, like working on the two meridians and reaching a third area? Well, I'm not sure I don't understand the that. question. Okay, no, a sure third dimension. Yeah. Okay, well. Time has flown past as it always does. We've just got a minute left to finish up. I just wanted to say a big thank you to Diana who's been working mm -hmm. away and chat. Sorry about if some thank of you God. felt uh, heard to echo. I think we fixed it now. Sorry about that. It's because a lot of us are all presenting mm -hmm. at once. So there's always a chance that's going to happen. But I hope it didn't spoil your evening. And um, we're really looking forward to next week because we're going to be looking wow. at chakras. <laughs> Did we um, have a question? We do have a question. Let's have a look. Your question is, next week is, what aspect of the energetic anatomy links all of the bodies? That's the four different bodies that we've experienced today with Nicola. Thank you very much, Nicola. And uh, yeah, so just think about that for next week. And we will ask you the question at the beginning of the beginning of the webinar next week. 
Okay, that's our time. Thank you so much, Nicola I'm and Gabriella and Diana. And thank you to thank all you. of you for tuning in. And we'll see you next week. And a special thanks to the Americans who did that over the Pacific thing for me. That worked so well. I couldn't believe it would work. It did, it did. Yeah, no, that was great. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay,